Good evening. Um, hey guys. So I have a little mail bag to share with you. I have the Kiwi Ears Cadenza, uh, color blue, and I also have the new Warner SG from Tang Zoo. I purchased these with my own money, um, but yeah, I just wanted to do a quick unboxing for you guys. These are both available right now on Amazon um, with, I think, it's prime shipping. It's a couple day shipping, so if you guys are interested, you live in the U.S. or maybe Canada. I'm not sure if they offer the same shipping to Canada, but um, yeah, if they're both on Amazon. You can get them in just a couple days, super fast. Uh, so the Kiwi Ears is $35 right now, and the Warner is $20. So, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start with the Kiwi Ears first. So, like I said, it's $35. Let me zoom in because my camera's freaking out here. So, it's $35 for the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. Uh, on the side here, we have some specs. So, it's got a 10 millimeter dynamic driver. Uh, it is a beryllium driver. The impedance is 32 ohms. Sensitivity is 110. So, they are pretty sensitive. You can drive them easily off of a phone. The total harmonic distortion, I find this very interesting. 0.3%. That is very low. Um, the earphone materials, medical grade resin. Yeah, you never know with that. Um, 20 to 20 kilohertz, and then plug type 3.5 millimeter, 2 pin, 78. All right, and then we got Kiwi ears. Camera, why are you freaking out? Stop freaking out. Um, not sure what it, that means. Apex CE Specialist Limited. I guess maybe that's the company? Designed by Kiwi Ears. Hmm. Anyway, um, comes in a nice little box. This is like a kind of like a KZ shaped box. So, for example, we have the Kiwi Ears. Um, like I said, it's kind of like a shape of a KZ box. The C2 for reference, and then the Warner, and the Warner is huge. I mean, that's the biggest box I've seen for a $20 pair of IAMs. That's just nuts. They went all out with the packaging. So anyway, comes in a little sleeve. Open the sleeve up. Got a nice Kiwi Ears logo there. All right. Gonna open them up. Then we have inside a little card here. Please read. Please kindly read the user manual carefully before using the product. Thanks. Oh goodness. All right. Just look at this real quick. It's got the warranty. How to wear. <laughs> anyway. All right. Hopefully you guys all know how to wear IEMs. So here we go. So here's the cadenza. Now the one thing I noticed with these, these are very very beautiful, but they have build issues they have some some imperfections some quality issues um not pertaining to the sound sounds fine but just physical like appearance issues uh and we'll go over that in just a minute um but yeah so there's the logo there you got the little kiwi ears there's the kiwi ears logo then you have this nice pearlescent blue looks cool so yeah, so that is the Kiwi Ears, and then take those out, they're in a little insert as per usual, put those off to the side. And we have our ear tips, uh, we have three three pairs of um, clear silicones, we have three pairs of black, now I believe these are all the same same size as far as the width goes on the nozzle yeah pretty positive so they're pretty much all the same tips they're just different colors if they're not the same they're very close so um, and then there is an issue with the included tips and I'll explain that to you guys in a minute but these tips are not a good fit for the IM um, the sound is fine but the fit is not uh, and then we have a cable. Actually, very nice looking cable for the price. It's a very nice looking cable for the price. So like I said, these are $35 on Amazon right now. Let's 
shoot, I always do this. I always open them up the wrong way and get them tangled. Alright, there we go. I just move this cinch all the way. Alright, so. There you go. Flush 2 pin. Those are actually really nice looking. High quality connectors. Looks good. The molding is good. The metal sleeves are good. The uh, quality of the hooks are good. The uh, vinyl or the rubber feels nice and springy. It's very, very good. It has a nice uh, chin cinch. This is definitely a very hefty chin, chin cinch. Probably wouldn't adjust it too much because it feels like I'm pulling um, too tightly on the cable. So I'd probably go easy with that. <laughs> Just not to to not ruin the cable. Uh, then you have the Y Y split there. It's molded very nicely. Much nicer than some other IMs that I've seen. All right, and then we have our final braid. Okay. Very nice. Very nice cable. So, they come with a very lovely cable for the money. So for $35 that cable is an A plus in my book. That is a very nice cable. So let's uh, go back down. Alright. So yep, so you get your cable, you get uh, nine was it three? yeah, nine sets of ear tips. Okay. And we'll pop these bad boys out real quick. Okay, got that. Uh, where is that? The warranty card. We'll put that back in. So we'll slide that back in like that, and we will set those on top. And I will get into the imperfections in a little bit. Um, so yeah, so that's the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. Like I said, thirty-five bucks. They're a good deal for thirty-five bucks. Um, they are not my personal rec. I do have an IM that I think is better than that, and I will tell you guys that towards the end of the video. But there is an IM that is $30 right now that I think is better than these. These are the most beautiful, and they are the smoothest of replay. So if you're looking for a smooth replay in the $35 range, these are the smoothest. Um, but yeah, we won't go too much into sound. This isn't supposed to be a review. Um, but just a um, unboxing and kind of initial impressions. So anyway, Warner SG. All right, let me let me start off with something real quick because I'm a little bit, um, what do you call it? Uh, conflicted. I'm a little conflicted on this box here. And the reason why I say that is, I'm a fan of beautiful packaging, um, but. I am also a person of the mindset that we are all going to die <laughs> one day um, and our planet is basically destroying itself right now um, or we're destroying it however you want to look at it and um, so when I see stuff like this this grandiose packaging I understand that it sells units people like it but I have a problem with the amount of waste because for anyone who doesn't save their boxes, and this is one reason why I save my boxes because I can look at them. Um, but yeah, the this is so much packaging and this is not cheap. This is expensive. So what I would rather see from manufacturers is that they take all this expense of packaging and they toss it aside and they put it into the technology of the IEMs. This this is all you need. This is 35 bucks. It's perfect case. Tells you everything you need to know. Shows you the product. It looks beautiful. And it's not a big waste. I, I don't feel bad about this. And if I decide to keep the box it doesn't take up much space. However, I do feel bad about this. Because not only did it consume all the ink to print? I mean, this is a lot of color. 
That's a lot of color. This screen print was not cheap. All the cardboard, okay? It's just a lot, it's just a lot of packaging. It's a lot of waste. It's too much. If this were a, you know, a $200 product or $500 product, something that's lower volume, this would be fine. This would be more acceptable because not as many people are going to buy it. It's lower volume, therefore it consumes less resources and creates less trash, creates less garbage. So, I, sorry guys, I don't mean to go on a rant here, but it just bothers me when I see shit like this where a company goes overboard on their packaging and that's why I love KZ so much. KZ keeps it super simple. They focus on the sound, they focus on the build, they focus on the the, the IMs themselves and then packaging comes, you know, second. It's a, it's a it's an afterthought. It's like, okay, here's the product. You know, what do you do? You you open up the okay. So realistically, really, what do you do? You open up the box once, and then what do you do? You, you toss this in the trash? You, you keep it on a shelf? It has no purpose. It, its purpose, its sole purpose is to keep the IM safe in shipping, you know, and then maybe spend a year or two on someone's shelf to look pretty. But it takes up too much space. The majority of the time, this is going to be, you know, thrown into a trash can and then someone's going to take the IMs, they're going to take, you know, they're going to get a jeweler's case for like a watch, you know, watch case or whatever, and they're going to get a cable for the IM or keep the stock cable and they're just going to use that and they're going to put it in the watch case with all their other IMs. Anyway, enough, uh, enough ranting, but yeah, it's just a waste. It's too much, too much packaging. So if you guys are seeing this Tangzu, please shrink your packaging. Don't go so crazy with it. People don't give a shit about this. If you want to do like a character or something, you know, and do something nice, something pretty, all you got to do is just make a picture or something, do a little waifu thing, do a little cardboard cutout or printout or something, or, or even a poster. I don't see any IM companies making a poster, but I guarantee if you get a nice enough looking like waifu on there and you make a poster of it and you fold the poster and stuff it inside the box, People are going to fucking put that shit on their wall. They're going to frame it and do whatever the hell they want to do with it. And that would be much better than than all this extravagance, all this over-the-top embellishment. So, anyway. And I, I hate to say that because, like I said, I, I do work with Canera. And Canera is the same way. They, they go over-the-top. But at least their packaging is more minimal. It's not this crazy. Because this is expensive. So anyway, get a nice cleaning cloth. Same same story. It's got a shit ton of ink on it. It's even it's even two sided. Look at that. Look at that. It's printed on both sides. That's a fuck ton of ink, guys. What are you doing? Spend half more than half of the price of that. All this stuff is just in packaging. Like probably less than half of the price is is spent on the product itself. Anyway, all right, enough enough ranting. Sorry, guys, Fucking putting me in a bad mood. Just seeing all this, all this waste, all this trash. Um, I'm sure some of my friends that are watching these videos know all about that crap. Because some countries aren't able to get rid of their trash. They can't just throw it away and then it disappears. Like they gotta burn that shit and breathe it in and all that. So go easy on the packaging, water or. or um, Tang Zhu. Anyway, other than that, everything is beautiful. Spe spectacular, of course. The IMs are absolutely lovely. The design is fucking just gorgeous. Um, the the shells are no different than, you know, your KZ or your CCA or your um, TRN. You know, your, your really low-end, like, plastic IMs. Other than that, it's no different. But the design, like they really put some thought into the design. So you see your uh, 10 millimeter driver there. You can actually kind of zoom in on that a little bit. You see, yeah. So you see, there's the 10 millimeter driver, and then you have your nozzle mesh inside, your tuning mesh. Nice tips, by the way. These are these are really nice uh, ear tips. 
So great, great, a little great quality all around from um, from Tang Zhu. I mean, they, these guys really went all out. But yeah, the fit, the finish, everything is is perfect. No complaints there whatsoever. Um, again, back to the excessive packaging. So we got all that space. Um, here, let me just move all this real quick. All right, so we got accessories. These would be your ear tips. All right. Um, by the way, great selection of ear tips. Like, freaking great job, guys. You got wide bore. You got more narrow. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So you get more narrow bore. You got your wide bores. They're all a little bit slightly different shape, it looks like. And then you have your other two sizes for the ones that came on the IMs themselves. So you got three pair there. And then you got, what is it? Uh, gee. So then you got another four pair in here. So you get seven pairs all together. Right? Two. Yeah. So you get seven pairs of ear tips. So very nice addition. Very welcome. Like I said, with, with Tang Zhu, I've got no complaints about the presentation, man. They really know how to how to pop it off. Alright, and then we'll get into the cable. Now this is the thing I haven't checked out yet, because I saw the bag, and I was like, uh-oh. I think that's a cheap cable. And it is. Um, it's, it, it's just a cheap, cheap, cheap cable. Um, the ear hooks are way, way too big. They're stiff. Um, not a very good cable. Um, in comparison, actually, let me just show you the Kiwi ears. I know the price is, is like $10 difference, $15 difference. And that makes a lot for, like, cable and stuff. But like I said, the, all that packaging that they wasted, that could have easily gone towards a better cable so so look at the quality of this cable here so you got a nice chin cinch you got um, a nice decent braid it's not not too thick not too thin everything is coated in anodized metal okay you have very nice tight ear hooks they're very soft very springy okay everything the molding on these are incredible I've seen like kilobuck IAMs with worse cables than this all right and then you have this right here and this is just just hard stiff way too big and then and then you and then another problem is you have all this length between the Y split okay and the, the actual IAMs themselves like you have that times two that's easily like two feet of of length where you're just going to have this happen okay see that okay so anyway poor choice in cable too much packaging if you guys would uh, go easy on the packaging the um, strain relief on the cable isn't bad it's actually one of the better strain reliefs I've seen it's actually functional um, the conductor quality itself looks okay the braid looks okay so I'm sure the cable performs well I haven't had an issue with the cheap cable yet but the overall quality of the cable could be a little bit better um, they definitely put more thought into the ear tips which I like to see um, because Kiwi ears did not put much thought into their ear tips and I'll explain that in a minute alright guys so let me um, let me get this mess sorted out real quick and then we'll get into the IMs themselves. All right, let's get back into it. Okay, so got the Kiwi ears here, we've got the One RSG. Um, we already unboxed everything, we got into the packaging. Um, now let's get into the fit and finish of the earphones themselves. I want to show you guys this. Okay, I'm going to move the light real quick. Okay, so a couple issues with the um, Kiwi ears. Okay, I'm just going to show you guys this real quick. These ear tips that they supplied are almost impossible 
to get on the earphones themselves. Okay, so there's the nozzle bore. Let's uh, grab this. A little micrometer, okay. So, biggest part is, okay, it's about 6.4 about 6.4 millimeters on the thickest part and about 5.4 on the thinner edge right there, okay? So 6.4 6.4 millimeter on the outer edge and 5.4 on the inner edge. That is pretty big, okay? Look at that. That is not anywhere close. Uh, let's see. That is about... That's about 3.5 millimeter, okay? Somewhere around there? Yeah, that's about 3.5 millimeter. Okay, so what did I say? 5.5 and 6.5 and like three and a half. So when you go to try to put these ear tips on, I'm telling you guys, you're gonna have a hell of a time getting them on. You're like, all right, that was easy, but <laughs> When I went to put these on earlier, holy crap, dude, I had to fight with them forever. Alright, and let me grab one more thing real quick. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe these down real quick, because I want to show you guys. I don't want too much oil. Alright, so... So here's our molding. You can already see there's just some slight imperfections in the shell. Nothing bad, you know, it's fine. It's okay. It's acceptable. But then we start getting to the, the back here and you see all the all the um, the wrinkles and stuff. Like, I don't know who painted this. If they dropped it or something in the factory. But it is it's really hard to get get, get this across. Let's see if I can uh, zoom in a little more on here. But yeah, you see how wrinkled that is? Like, what are you guys doing? Kiwi ears, you need to um, you need to have your QC uh, looked at just a little bit. Because this, that does not look good. It's like all wrinkly. Yeah, it's just not, not very good. The front's fine. You can see there, the front looks good. You can see my ring light there, everything looks good. Okay. But just the, um, around the nozzle area on this one unit, for whatever reason, it's like all wrinkly and just nasty looking. Um, and then same on this one. It's, uh, it's got, like, dots there. You see all those dots? See all the dots in the finish there? And then same thing around the nozzle. There's like, kind of just like junk. So anyway, yeah, if you guys could just, you know, have them uh, spend a little bit more time on the finish. Other than that, it's okay. Where was the one? This one also had a spot on it somewhere. Yeah, right there. There's a bubble underneath the um right there you guys see that it's like a bubble in the finish so so not the best not the best uh, finish as far as the um the QC like the the sound quality sound quality is fine sound quality is good um balance is good um no no complaints there they did a great job everything is is perfect with that um now the Warner SG this is a different story and the only reason why I say that is these are 3D printed and then they are lacquered by hand so they take they take a, you know like a, a lacquer okay and they brush it on by hand all right and that's how these are done so whenever you see imperfections it's because somebody actually had to do that by hand but in the Warner SG these are um, injection molded Okay, they're not 3D printed. Let me move that back a little bit. So these are injection molded. They're not 3D printed so that 
that uh, finish that you see that's just straight plastic that's how you can get the quality of the shells so high um, because you it's kind of hard to explain but you, you do this kind of construction technique when you're trying to prototype fast and when you want to build quickly um, kind of on a budget because 3d printing is pretty cheap to do this is um, when you're doing on a large scale so either they I don't think they made their own shells I think they bought this this shell mold from a factory so the factory already had this this mold in here but to get the tooling made for a mold like this is pretty expensive and it wears out after a little while so um, so anyway you have to have really good tooling but but once you have the good tooling for the injection molding, like you can just crank these out. Like you can make millions of them and they're dirt cheap. You just load the um, hopper full of plastic pellets. It runs it through an extruder and then it just just punches out a bunch of molds. And then they just have someone go around and just trim the excess real quick and slap it together. So really, 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 really cheap to manufacture, easy to manufacture. Like they don't even... You, you, they solder the wires to the drivers before they even push the drivers into the shells. Like instead of fiddling with the, the drivers when they're inside the shells, they just wire everything together and they go pop them in, put a little glue, and you know, put the lid on. So anyway, uh, another feature of these, which I thought was kind of cool, is they have, and I'm sure this wasn't cheap either, but they have a uh, laser etching on the driver there. So it says Tang Zoo. So that's pretty cool. Um, take, I'll take a closer look at these drivers later on and see what the differences are. I'll, I'll take measurements of them too because um, they, they're they interesting to me because they got the name on there and everything. Uh, see, does this have the screen printing? See, I don't see it on this one. Oh yeah, there it is. It's on the bottom. So somebody, somebody misaligned it. But anyway, yeah, so... Um, so yeah, so that's the, the One RSG and then the Kiwi Ears Cadenza. Now, what was the thing I was going to mention earlier? Um, so we got the ear tips, we got the cables. It, it, to give these a rating, um, the Cadenza, the packaging is an A+. The packaging on the One RSG is a freaking C-. minus. Um, cable, same thing. C minus, not very good cable, too much packaging. The cadenza, I'd say A plus on the cable, A plus on the packaging. Um, sound wise, won't talk too much about sound, but for the step up that you make in price from the twenty dollars to the thirty five dollars, that added added uh, fifteen dollars makes a whole lot of difference. Um, but then again, you also have IMs like these right here that are thirty dollars and it kind of muddies the tier a little bit so we'll get into that I will do a comparison for you guys I'll do a review um, and I also have the T2 DLC so we'll do that one as well but um but yeah for now I just wanted to unbox these kind of show you guys around the, the packaging um, the sound is good they're both very good IMs they're both very competent um, for the amount of money that you pay nowadays like can only dream of this kind of sound back you know a year ago two years ago 2020 this wouldn't be a thing for sure not for the price there's no way so um i will be taking the condensa apart we will take a look at that beryllium driver i'm very curious what the beryllium driver looks like and then eventually i don't know i really like these so i'm gonna have trouble taking them apart but uh eventually we will get into the um the c2 and we will see that pretty little driver in there because i'm very curious if it's the same driver that i used for um canera or for queen of um queen of audio so anyway all right guys take care have a good night peace